Who's that? Jimmy Mark. Jimmy B? Jimmy Barnes has been witness to. He's come out, come by us on the street intentionally with his daughter in Manchester just to walk up and talk. He's like, oh yeah, I'll come out and see you guys. Just to talk to us. He showed up last night when we were talking to Deb and uh, Paula and um, George for a while. On his break, he was doing work in, the, in Woodlake, came by. We just had to be talking about how to be saved, how you know you're saved, and then a bunch of other uh, stuff came up. Deb uh, Deb's been going to Seventh-day Adventist services. Really weird, man. But she's like, I ask them questions they don't have answers for, and they seems like they take one part of a, a verse and then try to expound on it. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Now, that's a woman who's been around Baptist churches, and also, obviously, now she's going to this one for some reason. I, I don't know why. But the Spirit of God inside her is saying, there's something off about that. So don't tell me you don't know what church to go to. Yeah. Now, sometimes you're pinned down and you... <laughs> you don't have a lot of choices, man. So you go to the one that you can put up with the most, man, unfortunately. But honestly, we were driving from Chicopee, Mass to Manchester to go when Brother Bird had his church. And then from Chicopee, where the kids were babies, man, to Plainville. In a light blue escort. Picture that for just a second. Yeah. No. Autom oh, that's, it was Karen's car. It was automatic, man. Then the head gas went. Roll down windows, yeah. But my, my point in what I said Sunday, and it's just kind of resounding a little bit, is I wasn't, you know I wasn't bragging about traveling. You go where God wants you to go at whatever expense it takes you. What's that? But that's drug-related. <laughs> There's now see you crossed over into fentanyl and <laughs> heroin. That's and if we know her, that kind of that's maybe a partly true. Except for when the Holy Ghost. See that's how that if you didn't believe in God, watch her get in the pulpit. You'd be like, that's true. he talks. <laughs> what? Now see if you know you know her. That's just the way he is, man. <laughs> that's hilarious. But people laugh, man. It's not the man that's doing it. It shouldn't be. But you, you, will, you will know where, you'll know where to go. Don't, listen to me, don't ever go to the church of your choice. Ask God where he wants you to go, and it might involve you traveling. I, I don't know how that, that thing works out, but uh, Jimmy Barnes, man. Guy lives... I didn't even ask him, he just going to start talking about it. He's been, he's been bothered about this for a while. And he's not like the rest of your co-workers who typically are like trying to trick you into sin or just so belligerently against it. I'm not saying they won't get saved, but they're like a little more, they're prickly to it, if you will. But he actually, he'll listen to you and he doesn't have that hard, stiff neck against it, man. So you don't know. <coughs> Pretty cool, man. Keep praying for these people. You have no idea, man. Well, I wouldn't save them. I, I don't know what. Yeah, that's because you're not God, man. I have no idea, man. Why would he save somebody like me? No idea. So, uh, Also, we're going to, I just reached out to the people at Minuteman Press to do another EDDM, every door direct mail. So we're going to do Manchester this time. So we'll have Vernon, Ellington, Manchester, and then we'll do Lord Wollens, South Windsor, and East Hartford. 
just want to do like the immediate surround area. Maybe summer. I don't know yet. We'll see how, how it goes. But you see what good comes of it. You have no idea, man. You got, look at that. Yeah, our boy right there, James. You got the mailing. I hate to say this it's because it sounds so cruel, but you're, in, you're not responsible for their reaction. You're responsible for doing what the Lord told you to do. I, I want to see people saved. That's not like me just dropping a carpet bomb of a couple tracks and then leaving and saying, yeah, you know what? So No, you pray for them. You pray somebody comes along and waters that. Or maybe that's the water to somebody else who planted the seed. You don't know where you are in the chain of that person getting that Bible verse or that track or whatever. And you know what? Let's pray for them to get saved, man. But you, you can't control the, who gets saved when. You guys remember the story about Tom Benson's brother, right? Prayed for him for like 45, 40 years, 45 years. Got saved and died like, like within a month or two or something. Just bizarre, man. I don't know how that works, man. No idea at all. All right, got some questions for you. Easy. What was that? That's that phone is not a concordance. That's a out of the pit of hell device of the devil. No. All right. So this is an easy one right off the bat. I need some main characters and things out of the book of Esther. Just give me one at a time. Out of the book of Esther, may, just give me, obviously, pick the easy one, Jonathan. Bingo. <laughs> now, I'm going to ask you a follow-up question. What was her other name besides, besides Esther? Do you guys remember? Do you remember her, what her name was? Be, remember, as you go through it, what her uh, other name was? Esther's a good one. That's it. Hadassah. Remember that? So, all right, Esther's down. That's an easy one. Give me some of the main characters. Go ahead, give me one of them. Mordecai. Mordecai. You can't, you can't beat that, man. I mean, honestly. That's two. Go ahead. King Ahasuerus. Oh, uh, yeah. King Ahasuerus. Man. Wow, man. That's pretty good right there. That's, those are some major ones. Who else you got? How about the feast they celebrated at the end of the book? Does anybody remember what that was called? What was it called? Go ahead. Purim. Purim or Purim. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, Purim, Purim. Yeah. Purim. They still celebrate. So, okay. What else you got? That, that's, we got a few. You got to get Haman. Haman's one of the most major types of antichrist in your King James Bible in the Old Testament, man. Go ahead. Vashti, absolutely. Woman, you don't get to come unless you touch that, my, my scepter. That, of course you would get that. that. Don't come in the living room unless you got my remote. Remember that, man? That's right. Say people, say people don't watch TV. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Give me, some, give me someone or something else. The gallows that Haman that, You know, Justin, I knew I was starting to warm up to you a little bit. But no, but Kenny's going down tonight, man. This is going to be bad. We're going to have all-star wrestling with Kenny. No, so that, that's, that's, you've, pretty much, you've pretty much cleaned it out. That's what I was looking for. I was looking for Queen Vashti, Esther, which is Hadassah. I was looking for the Gallows, Purim, Mordecai, I mean Ahasuerus. Looking for the main, the main elements of Esther. In fact, that came up last night. Because when uh, Deb goes to the Seventh-day Adventists because they want to be Jews, that's what they are. They're trying to be Sabbath-keeping and pork abstain. They want to be Jews and all that stuff. And they're big on soul sleep and all that foolishness. So we had a chance to cover it. And she goes, she goes, I brought up Esther and Purim to them and the Passover and all that and the, and the Seders and all this. You know, the Seders, their celebrations. I, I know what they are, but I'm just saying... To the, to the Jew and all that. So she goes, they didn't understand Passover. And I said, well, Christ is our Passover for us. 1 Corinthians 5, 7. So, interesting. All right. That's some good stuff out of Esther, man. How many was Enoch from Adam? You know how, you know, you know how sometimes they'll say, and the firstborn. And what number was Enoch from Adam? Go, oh, okay. wow. Oh, I just read it. I think I remember it. 14. No. But it's a, it's a multiple. Go ahead. Justin, I see you over here, kid. He's already, he's already, go ahead. What is he? June 14th. 
Go ahead and read it, man. And Enoch, also the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints to yep. execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them. Yep, you got it. You got it. I know, you're not godly speech. Not, no, I'm not being smart. I know, but that's... He's, now, go to, go to First Chronicles. Here's your, here's your companion verse to it. Go to First, go to First Chronicles. Will be Jude 14's cross reference. Jonathan, if you can read verses one and two, definitely you're not going to read the first two chapters. That's for sure, man. You'll get them. <laughs> yeah, First Chronicles one and two, please, if you could. What chapter? Uh, did I say if I didn't say one? First Chronicles one. That's my fault. First Chronicles one. Yes, sir. Adam, Seth. Actually, three. Four. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. You got it, kid. Oh. <laughs> Adam, Sheth, Enos, Canaan, Mahalalel, Jared, Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech, Noah, Shem, and Jacob. So what number is Henoch from Adam? Seventh. So that's your Jude 14 reference. Now, let me just say this to you, and I'm sure you probably, well, I hope, I hope you caught it. Who, who's missing out of that list after Adam? How about Cain and Abel? Yeah, I was just gonna say. Interesting how that's on there. You have to find Abel in the book of Matthew, and you have to find Abel over in the book of Hebrews. But didn't God say about Judas, it was good for that man if he had what? Who's Cain a type of? He's not in that list. You say, that's crazy. Oh, no. You go to Matthew, he's not there either. At, isn't that crazy? A type of Christ and a type of Antichrist, and God takes him out of the list. That goes to show you what we looked at a couple weeks ago about Job. Sometimes God counts years and months and days, and sometimes he doesn't. Sometimes he puts a reign of a king in. Sometimes he splits a reign. He'll change the king's name in, in between it. That's not God being funny. It is part of God testing your faith in His Word. I believe that wholeheartedly. I believe He throws things in there to mess you up so that you will just go forward and say, Father, I don't have a clue, but I'm going to keep on reading. I'm going to keep on reading, and I know, because I believe Your Word is true, You're going to reveal it to me one day. may not be today. might not be, might not be a, a month from now. But haven't you ever been reading before, and then you read, and it's been months weeks and months and all of a sudden either the preaching or your own reading and the light switch goes click and you're like that's what the answer you just got to remember the question from the previous months before man so but yeah seventh go to Genesis go to Genesis uh, chapter 5 if you could please uh, no we got to go back further uh, you know what go to 5 so just, I, I'm not trying to wear this out, but the Bible says this, verse number two, male and female created them, blessed them, called their name, so they're both called Adam, in the day that they were created. And Adam lived 130 years, he got a son in his own likeness after his, after his image, calls name Seth. So Adam and then Seth, right? Verse six says, and Seth begat, uh, lived 105 years and begat Enos, okay? The Bible says in verse number nine, and Enos lived 90 years and begat Cainan. Verse number 12 says, And Cainan lived 70 years and begat Mahalalel. That's the one that we read over in Chronicles. Now go down with me into verse number 15. And Mahalalel lived 16 five years and begat Jared. Go to verse 18. And Jared lived in 162 years and begat Enoch. Count those out. That's the seventh. Now it'll freak you out when you get to David's sons and all that. He's called the eighth in another place and then the seventh somewhere else. We'll say that question for when the genius is back. <laughs> All right. What type of cord? Don't say electrical, Polly. <laughs> what type of cord is not quickly broken? What's the answer? Okay. That is correct. Where would you find that? He asked Dave Brown to quote it. Kenny, I've been there for every significant event in your life. I was a doctor that gave birth to you. Uh, your, 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 first, your first shot. Your first kitten. 
I gave it to you. Pumpkin. Yeah. <laughs> Turn to pumpkin pie. Okay. Quickly. Do you, now we got to give Jennifer a chance because it's she. Okay, let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 4. He, I, and I actually misquoted it. I had to go up to him after and say I misquoted it. I, I messed up the first part of it. He goes, Dave Brown, what's it called? I'm like, what? I'm having a good time over here with the sand on my toes, man, loving life. <laughs> Kenny Estiano weeping all over each other, man. And he's asking me to quote Bible verses on the beach. What's that new show, Bible verses on the beach? Pulling me in, Paulie, pull, these people pull me in from everywhere, man. Seriously, what's wrong? Leave me alone, man. Leave me alone. All right, Jennifer, verse number 12, please. And if one prevail against him, you shall withstand him, and the three will forth not be broken. Amen. Now, quickly, can you read verse 11, please? Again, if two lie together, then they have heat, but how can one be Now, that's pretty cool. Now, if it's Kenny, you got a fire, right? Maybe just build a book. Now, <laughs> let, now, let me give you a cross reference to that. 1 Kings chapter 1, verse number 2. What did King David do when he was old and cold? Yeah, see, that's your, that's your Ecclesiastes. But he did not, he did not, he did, Paul, you're a little excited over there. The, uh, man, this kid's like. Well, I don't know if it's, oh, never mind, man. This, wow. Is your all on the altar a man? He was like me when I got the cold. The cold, he's all shaking, yeah. You started freaking out with the COVID? You turned to a... I just got it away from work, so I didn't hear their mouth. Oh, I was like, yeah, zombie blood. James, can you, uh, James, can you read 1 Kings 1 and 2, please? This is a good reference to uh, Ecclesiastes 4.11. Uh, first, I'm sorry, 1 Kings 1, 1 and 2. That's, if I did not say it again, that, I'll, I'll pick it up a notch. I'm near death anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, tell me that's not Ebonics, man. That's the best. Uh, wherefore his servant said unto him, Let there be sought for my lord, the king, a young virgin, and let her stand before the king, and let her cherish him, and, the, and let her lie in, the, in thy bosom, and my lord, the king, may get me. Okay, now, can you read three and four? Just like, I'll make a point and I'll move on. Mm -hmm. You got it. Yep. Here's a great Bible definition about physical relations going back to Genesis. Go ahead. But the king knew her not. There you go. That's what did Adam do with his, with his wife? Adam knew he, she conceived. Now I know new, no, no. I understand that's a form of knowledge and I, I, of gathering information and data. But always use and always take what, how God defines a Bible verse and a Bible word the first time you see it. It's called the law of first mention. Then after that, you have what's called the law of further mention, how God will continue to use it. Then you have the law of final mention. But the law of first mention, how God uses the word, typically sets up the definition and usage of it throughout your Bible. That's how you know what happened between Noah and his son was not him looking at his drunk, passed out dad. And I'm not being dis disgusting at all, but that's what happened to Noah. And that's, that's how that cookie crumbles. And I don't care what anybody says on the internet and the Greek and the Hebrew and you don't know what you're talking about. Use the Bible to define what you believe and how God means it. Noah is a physical relationship, typically sexual. Okay, I'll give you one more. Go to Matthew 1. See, now, now you got me all ticked off, James. Good job. <laughs> yeah, I know, and it ticked me off, man. No. <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> all right, Mo, with, with your one good eye, could you read Matthew 1, 24 and 25? I'll just give you one more of these. Matthew 1, 24 and 25. Then we'll move on. So she's a virgin all the way through. 
But here's the thing that cripples all the Roman Catholic beliefs, and I grew up that way, is that she's a perpetual virgin. No, she's not. The Bible says he knew her after her time and her term was done giving birth to Jesus Christ. It's got other kids all in the book of Matthew. Uh, Mark's, she has other, her and Joseph have other children. I see a scowl on your face. Is that an inquisitive I was, one? I was wondering, because I didn't, I didn't know that the, that the Catholic teaching was that she was perpetually a Oh, yeah. There's, they, think, they think Mary was immaculately conceived, not just Jesus Christ. There's all, you really dig into it. That, That she is immaculately conceived, and when she, she was taken up to heaven in a special way, it's, the, it's called the ascension. I mean, like copying Jesus Christ. Oh, this thing, but I don't blame, Mary of the Bible is one of the greatest characters you could ever model yourself after, even as a male. She was, she was chaste. She pondered in mind what the Lord said. She was obedient to what God said. Having, she's a virgin, she gets pregnant. By no man? There's a lot of good stuff about Mary, but not the one the, the, the catholics make, man. You walk, in, you, watch in, you walk in the average catholic church, and I know this because I could take you right, I guarantee you St. Peter's in downtown North Walpole, New Hampshire, where I grew up, it's, it's like Brigadoon, it appears once every hundred years, man. There's only 500 people in that town left. Not that it was big to start with, no thriving metropolis. But St. Peter's, right on Church Street, of course, you walk in and right to your right, there's the, it's, it, Batman's there. The, I call it the Cape Crusader, like the one down in Vernon. Yeah. You know, the one that's like this? Yeah. She's the Cape Crusader, man. And she's got the little, she's got the Riddler and the Joker around her. You say you're making fun of her. 100%, I'm not making fun of Mary. I'm making fun of the one they think she, that's Mary. That's Ashtaroth, the Queen of Heaven. So anyway, you walk into St. Peter's Church, and you know what she has? She has a baby in her arms. She has 12 stars around her head. And she has Satan under her feet. A serpent like this. See, you know, when a Mormon comes to talk to you, they're never going to tell you what they really believe. That if you're a female, you're going to give birth to a whole planet of people one day, and you're going to be like a goddess and subject to your god husband. Oh, man, you don't have no idea, man, what this stuff is really about. The further you stray away from that book, man, but they'll use just enough of it to keep you interested. When you, when you see those commercials for the Latter-day Saints, the Mormons, what do they, uh, we were talking about it a couple weeks ago, what do they always offer you besides the Book of Mormon? Call now for your free copy of the Book of Moron, Bo Book of Moron and your free copy of the King James Version of the Bible. Seductive, huh? You have Baptist churches that don't believe and use the King James Bible. But the Mormons do. They believe Michael and uh, uh, Jesus and Lucifer were brothers and that Jesus had a better plan of redemption and Lucifer got kicked out because he rebelled and he was angry and all that stuff. And Oh, man, you got to study this. Up. Jesus met, you know, the Aleutian Indians and all that stuff and came to North America. They're still doing prophecies today out in Salt Lake City. I'm telling you, man, if you really did, people are just so stupid. They think that anything on the internet that has a Bible or a Bible verse or a preacher up there, they, you, you better be careful, man. And examine it according to what the Word of God says. All right. That was good heaviness right there. It was good for you. I need some verses on fellow. In particular... Fellowship, fellow soldier, fellow citizens, things like that. Give me some verses on the, how God uses the term fellow linked up with, with something else. You should pick the easy one right off the bat, man. Get it out of the way. Take it before anybody else can get it. Fellowship, fellow soldiers, fellow citizens. Uh, go, Haley, you got it? There you go. Have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove. Them. I'm sorry. Go ahead, buddy. No, read it. Don't get all, don't get snarky. Read it. Yeah. 
that's real. That's a, that's a great. I am not to link up and have fellowship with those folks that do that stuff. Go ahead. Taylor, you got one? And then I got Taylor and then Mo and then Jen. Go ahead. Fellow citizens in the house, go ahead. Sorry. Perfect. Yep. All right, I have Mo, Jen, and Ken. This is freaky. Kenny's coming to the play, man. Go ahead. Yeah, that's now Mo. That's come on. That's the classic one right there. Bingo. Amen. I'm looking for something to break the mold and give me a little fellow soldier, fellow. You know, go out on a limb, live large. Jen and then Ken. You don't have that. Kenny, go ahead. No, go ahead. <laughs> oh man, the fellowship of his son. Mm-hmm. Yes. Amen. That's pretty cool right there. So my fellowship was with his son, but then how do we have fellowship? We believe the same thing. That doesn't mean every little, I mean, we're just going to strain on that, but we believe the things that are common to the Word of God, and we have, that's how we found fellowship with the son and fellowship with one with another, man. Brother Kenny? Philippians 1. And then Karen. Philippians 1, go ahead. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I'll start at 1. Paul and Timotheus, the servants of Jesus Christ to all the saints in Christ Jesus, which are at Philippi with the bishops and deacons. Grace be unto you and peace from, our, from God our Father and from the, the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, for you all make your requests with joy. For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day. Of Perfect. You got it. You got it, Toyota. I got Karen, and then I have Justin. I, we'll, we'll get you in there. Go ahead, Karen. Kenny took mine, but Kelly didn't say it. That doesn't count. There's no proxies here, man. Leviticus 6. Which one? Leviticus 6. That's the first time. Very good. Your neighbor. Yep. Mm hmm. Yep. First time fellowship is mentioned is verse number two in the King James Bible. First mention. All right, I have Justin. I think Jonathan had kind of a, he did, he had a mid up and then Polly. Go ahead, please. Philemon. Yep. One through six. Yep. Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, and Timothy, our brother, unto Philemon, our dealer, dearly beloved, mm -hmm. our fellow laborer. Yep. And to our beloved Apiha and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in thy house. Apphia. Apphia. Yeah, I'm not, I mean, if you want to say to Piha, that's good, but when you meet, they're going to smack you in the face, man, for saying, <laughs> what am I, a blueberry Apiha or a lemon Piha? What? <laughs> I thank my God, making mention of thee always in my prayers, hearing of thy love and faith which thou hast toward the Lord Jesus and toward all saints, that the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. Okay, fellow soldier in verse number two and fellow laborer in verse number one. That's a good knockout of two right there. Excellent. What's the matter? Well, we're done, ma'am, so thank you. Thank you. Now, I need Jonathan, and I need Paul, and then we'll swing back. 1 Corinthians 10, 20. Oh, yeah, man. Fellowship, I cup of devils. I would not have fellowship with devils. Whoa. That's a rough one, man. Imagine fellowshipping with a devil. Yeah, you could do that. All kidding aside, you could do that with TV or videos on YouTube. You could have a fellowship with them. You don't have to, well, I don't yoke up with them. Well, yeah, you spend time with them. No, man. I know it's, it's not as, uh, we, think it's just, we think it's just really spooky and way out there. Nah. 
Go ahead, Brother Paul. You got what do you got for me, kid? Go ahead, please. If there be therefore any consolation, bowels and mercies. There you go. That's a good one. My joy. That's a good one. Fellowship of the Spirit. Then you had Fellowship of the Gospel. Those are some good ones, man. Real good ones. All right. Karen, go ahead. I said fellow, didn't I? Mm, it's kind of... Let's see. What would I give Jen on that? <laughs> Out of 200. I grade on a different curve. Like if you can hit my curve, then you get a grade. <laughs> so, all right, go to Ephesians. Go to Ephesians. Man, we'll see what we can knock out tonight, man. Ephesians 3. Pick apart the passage a little bit. We've done a lot of background on this. I know we kid about it. I don't know any other way to do this. I hope you enjoy it. I don't know any other way to do this. I don't know how to... I know some guys can teach through a book relatively quickly, and you don't have to hit every point. I don't think we've hit every point in Jose. You're going to laugh, but we really haven't. But I, I can't read this Bible without this thing's jumping out at me. I can't do it. And I feel that if it'll jump out to me, maybe it'll be a blessing to you and jump out to you. That's, that's just, the way, just the way it rolls, man. And I, you know what? I do know this. I know you battle with the same stuff I battle with. And the more of this cleansing water of the word you get, the better chance you have of dealing with the thoughts and imaginations that come your way. And I know they come your way. It's just like they come my way. And the more of this Bible you get, listen, I understand the devil knows the Bible better than any of us put together. I get that. Uh, but you're a child of God. The Spirit of God dwells inside you. And the only way you're going to wage a good warfare, the only way I am going to wage a good warfare is with this sword of the Spirit. And the only way you'll have an effective prayer life is with this book. You think all the crazy stuff you've prayed for over the years or the crazy prayers you've said when you could have just done it God's way. Not the prayer of Jabez or any of that nonsensical foolishness or the Lord's Prayer in Matthew 6. I'm talking good Bible prayer from the Pauline Epistles. We preached on that probably a year and a half ago. I was just looking through the messages and stuff. There's a lot of good stuff to pray for, man. Wisdom, revelation, understanding His will completely as we went through it. A lot of good stuff. To pray. You're not going to know that without the book. So Ephesians 3, I said all I have to say this. Verse number 1 says, For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given, to, uh, given me to you, word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men. Now watch as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs in the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel, whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Now, we looked at verse number one briefly last time we were together. For this cause, and for this, what's, what's for this cause referred to? Like, kind of like, therefore, what, what's it there for? Um, you could do the same with wherefore. Well, what, what does for this cause refer to? Well, if he says for this cause, what do you think he's trying to call your attention to? What he previously said in chapter 2. And what did he say in chapter 2? For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works, as any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, creating Christ Jesus unto good works, that he, that he hath before ordained that we should walk in them. That's verse number 10. But then he goes on and says, you Gentiles were on the outside looking in. You are absolutely hosed. You're without Christ, having no hope, without God in the world, no covenants, no promises, no fathers. You had nothing. But when Jesus Christ tore down that middle wall of partition, that veil of the temple rent from the top to the bottom, as we talked about last night with the folks at Woodlake. That door is now open. Yes, it went to the Jew first, and we understand that. And we looked at all those verses in the book of Acts where God changes the, the program, and he starts pulling in those verses from Isaiah. We saw in the book of Romans and other places where he now starts making second coming verses, which are still going to apply 
he now starts applying them through the Pauline epistles to Gentiles getting saved. It's the most bizarre thing you've ever read in your life, man. How can you keep that all perfectly in order with not one jot or tittle failing? You have to be God Almighty. And so when you get to for this cause, it calls you back to the previous chapter, particularly the last eight or nine verses. Now, that being said, I'll show you, I'm going to show you a quick example, and then we're coming back. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, please. Let's see, who have I not got to read yet? Let's, uh, uh, Haley, why don't you do this? Can you read verses, Second Corinthians 4, 1 and 2, please. Okay, so he just said, therefore, seeing we have this ministry. What's the ministry? You're overthinking it. Therefore, what's he taking you back to? T chapter 3. So go back to chapter 3 very quickly. Verse 6 says, who hath, all, uh, who hath made us able ministers of the New Testament? Not the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killed, but the Spirit gives life. But if the ministration of death written in engraved in stones was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses, for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away, how shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? For the ministration of condemnation be glory, much more doth the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. Now how many times does he have to say ministration, ministry, and all that? Because now he's telling you in chapter 4, therefore seeing we have this ministry. What's the ministry? The ministry of the New Testament. Moses got the law, came down, face was so overtaken with the glory of God and all the things he saw on that mount. He came down, they had to put a veil on his face. Well, the veil is done away with in who, according to the rest of that chapter in chapter 3. Where's the veil done away? It's done away with in Christ. So what's our ministry today? We preach Jesus Christ of the New Testament. How that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Because that's the gateway, that's the, that's the ministry of the New Testament. You don't have a New Testament until the what? Therefore, seeing we have this ministry. What's the ministry? The ministry of the New Testament. The gospel of grace of God given to you and I. That's the ministry. Because, because as you go down... Go down further in chapter 4, it says what? If our gospel be, verse 3, hid, it is hid to them that are what? In whom the what? Of them which what? Lest the light of the... You know what we do, save people? We are to exhibit, to open our mouths, to show the glorious light of the gospel, the New Testament ministry from chapter number 3. And he uses Moses and the law as a comparison. If that was great, how much greater is it now for you and I to be able to tell somebody they have eternal life through a risen Savior? That's the ministry. The, the ministry to lost people. And then he goes on to chapter 5 and says, go to chapter 5. Go to chapter 5. This, this is, see, this, what do I run into when I do this, man? I just, it's wild. But how, how can you leave this out, man? Verse number 17 says, therefore, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new, and all, things are, and all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to him by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us what? That, there's the ministry. Christ saved me, reconciled me back to God when I was an enemy. That's what reconciliation is for between two feuding, warring factions, tribes, nations, whatever it is. Well, God's war and hate is against my sin and me as a sinner. You're not all set if you're not saved. You're not everything's okay and cool. It's not. In fact, it's the opposite of cool if you were to die. That's why we go out with the ministry of reconciliation, trying to reconcile them back to God through who? Jesus Christ. For He is our peace. What do you want between two warring factions? Peace. That's why they send ambassadors and guys over to work out a treaty and agreement and what are you going to give up and what are you going to not touch and are you not going to come into my land and touch my stuff and you're not going to come over and touch my stuff and they try 
Well, God's saying, I have reconciled through my son, Jesus Christ, the debt you owe me for your sin. In fact, I took your hell for you through my son, Jesus Christ. Because you're my enemy without him. We're all God's children. What Bible are you reading? That's that UN garbage and the other, I'm trying to think of the nitwit that said that, the, the, the brotherhood of man and the fellowship of God. You're, you might all share the same blood, uh, Acts 7, but it's sin-sick blood. You got, your sin, you got your sin-sick blood from Adam who ate a grape, who changed his water to, uh, system into a blood system that was corrupted. <laughs> Yes, I'm leaving you right there with that. But you knew that's true. Oh, okay. If you are a royalty or from royalty, what do they call you? What's your name? A blue blood. Yeah, man. You had a water system. It gets tainted by the blood of a grape. Send all your comments in on, on Facebook and wherever else we're out on. I don't even know. Send an email to, send, send email to the no mailbox. Like I, like I said a few weeks ago, my, my buddy from Chicago says, ah, he goes, you said complaint box. That's funny. I said, yeah, if you guys want to put a complaint, there's a complaint box in the back. Oh, yeah, there's, there's one. So that's where your complaints go. <laughs> you, eat, you eat a great... What? Yeah, that's it, right. You know, no, there's, an, there's, another, there's another can to the left that you could put your complaints in if you'd like. We'll recycle your, we'll recycle your complaints. <laughs> All kidding aside, what's the first public miracle Moses did in front of Pharaoh? Public miracle, not the snake. On, we understand that. Not the hand. What's the first public miracle? Water to blood. And what was the first public miracle Jesus Christ did? Is that a coincidence? No. Not at all. When Jesus Christ, it's water, yeah, water to wine, water to blood, and the, uh, the blood of the grape. When Jesus Christ dies on a cross, the Bible says what came out of him in John 19? Water to water. It's terrible. You know why they're actually giving that? We're not going to go there. You go to Proverbs 31. That's what you give, that's what you give a dying thief. You give him a painkiller, you give, you give him anesthesia. So that's why they're putting stuff up there to get him to drink it, man. The vinegar obviously is a joke to make him sour up in that sun, the midday sun. But they're also trying to give him whatever they can to anesthetize him from the pain. He's like, nah, I, I got this, man, in case you're wondering. But I'm not going to let you know that until three days from now. All right, where was I in Ephesians? Ephesians chapter number three. Now, that was a good bunny trail. It's good for you. It builds character, man. Chapter 3. The Bible says this, verse number 2, if you, uh, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, I'm going to run these because we're going we're gonna to run out of time. Let's, let's do this. Now, dis, wh what do you guys know um, or what have you heard or what do you believe a dispensation is? In your, in your own words, what do you believe it is? Okay, time period. Take that. Anybody else? No, go. <laughs> Jennifer. Different instructions given out to different people. Yep. It's the common, the common teaching, even amongst our circles. In fact, you have a book written by one of the smartest men, Bible men ever. His name is Clarence Larkin. He wrote a book called Dispensational Truth. And it was about how the, there's a couple ways to go about your Bible. Rightly dividing the way of truth, uh, rightly dividing the word of truth is obviously the correct way to do it, okay? But there's a really good way for you to go through your Bible. It's to find out God's covenants that he makes with man. That's a tremendous way to find out how God gives instructions to man, like Jennifer said. So, Kenny, you're, you're a little bit right, but what I, what I want you to do is get, the traditional way is God works And it comes from dispensational truth a little bit. There's dispensation of the, you know, innocence and government and, you know, Lucifer falling and, you know, the you know, New Testament and the law given by Moses and all that stuff. 
And it's all right for a framework, but a dispensation, as Jennifer said, is it's God dispensing something to mankind. Instructions for where they're at and how they're supposed to get through that particular period. What did he tell Noah to do? Build an ark, man. What did he tell Adam to do? Till the ground, you know, but just keep the guard. You're supposed to work. You're just not going to reap the thorns and thistles until after you sin in the sweat of your brown. You're that's what you're going to eat off. That's or it's what you're going to you're going to consume now. Before that, work is part of the deal. There's going to be work in the millennial kingdom. It's just not going to cause you the strain and stress that it does now. So he told Adam, take care of the garden, name the animals, don't eat of that tree. He told Noah, build an ark. What did he tell Abraham? Yeah. Ur of the Chaldees, I'll make you, whosoever blesses you, I'll bless them. And circum remember, circumcise your kids on the eighth day. Start with it. Yeah, that's weird stuff, man. But he did that. He did to an old, an old a thirteen. Of course, he's thirteen years old. Ishmael, rebel. Uh, and then he gets circumcised like ninety-nine years old, ninety plus years old. And that starts circumcision, that covenant, right? And then he gives them all the stars, stars of the sky and sand of the sea. What's he tell David for a covenant? What's he say to David? I'm always going to have somebody, the seed of your body sitting on that throne. And one day, the real seed's going to come through my son, Jesus Christ. What's he tell you today? Repent and be baptized? Well, he did at the beginning in Acts of the Apostles. But what does he tell you now? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. Repent toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Salvation by grace through faith, plus or minus nothing, shed blood of Christ. No baptism, no preparing for the king or the kingdom. You have a sin problem, you need to individually take care of that through the blood of my son who died a propitiation style death for you and, prepare, and made a propitiation for you and a redemptive price paid for your sins. Then what's after the church age? Tribulation, time of Jacob's trouble. Then after that, what comes after that? The millennial reign of Christ for a thousand years. Then after that, you have eternity, man. So don't get caught up in dispensations where it's... Th this is what you'll hear, and I'm not trying to drag this out, but you're going to hear this stuff. Well, you're in, the, you're in the age of grace. Didn't Noah find grace in the eyes of the Lord? Didn't Abraham find grace in the eyes of the Lord? Didn't, didn't David find grace in the eyes of the Lord? Isn't there, remember Sunday school, this is eons ago. I'm at eons, it was eons ago, where we went through and we showed grace before the law, under the law, just today, millennial kingdom, it's going to happen when David's on the throne and Jesus Christ, uh, David's uh, the prince and Jesus Christ is the king. We saw that in Zechariah, the spirit of grace is poured out. So you can't say the age of grace is today. What you can say is we preach the gospel of grace of God. But grace has been God's overarching theme towards people that don't deserve anything but hell. Interwoven in that is mercy. But it gets more specific through the payment his son made on the cross. So to say that we're in the dispensation of grace, just be really careful. I know Romans 6 says we're under grace. I understand that. It's a specific kind of grace. What's a, somebody, somebody read John 1.17 real quick. Now, I'm not doing this. We're not redoing divide, write the divide and word of truth. I'm going to look at the verses on dispensation. We'll shut it down. So. Was there not grace and truth before Jesus Christ showed up? It has to be specific. Was there faith before Jesus Christ showed up? Sure there was. But not the faith that saves your soul for eternity and puts you into the body of Christ. Okay, I have some puzzling looks. Let's go to Galatians. Let's thank you. Go to Galatians. He liked it. He was like, ah! Go to Galatians 3. Let's do this here. Uh, Taylor, Galatians 3, 22 and 23. This will go along with John 1, 17, please. But the scripture Down to 25, sorry. <laughs> but the scripture has concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should, there, which should afterwards be revealed. Would that not be a specific kind of faith? A faith in who? Jesus Christ. It's by Bible definition. Because you know that 
Abel had faith to do the right sacrifice. You had Noah by our, with fear prepared an ark by faith. You, you, have a, you have a whole chapter of faith and works in Hebrews 11. They had to believe what God said to them, to what Jennifer said about dispensation. In the time they lived, God said, this is what I'm dispensing to you. This is what you're to do to believe and to perform for me. Go ahead, Tay. Well, there's been faith, there's been faith right along, man, but not saving faith through the blood of Jesus Christ and the finished work of that cross. So let's look at dispensation real quick. Let's do this. Uh, Kenny, 1 Corinthians 9. 1 Corinthians 9. You guys all wept when Kenny told that story about me and him, didn't you? Yeah. That was a tearjerker movie right there. It's a tearjerker. I thought you were going to stand up and do it. That's my boy. <laughs> <laughs> you should be happy if somebody finds out something in their Bible. This isn't all for me. It's not Dave Brown's church. Are you serious, man? <laughs> Stupid, man. 13 through 19, Brother Kenny, if you could. Do ye not know that they which minister about holy things live of the, the, the things of the temple, and they which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar? Even so hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. But I have used none of these things, neither have I written these things, that I, it should be so done unto me. Right. For it were better for me to die than that any man should make my glory void. For though I preach the gospel, Here you I, go. Have no, I have nothing to glory of, for necessity is laid upon me, yea, woe is unto me. If I preach not the gospel, yeah. for if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, Look at this. the dispensation mm -hmm. of the gospel is commend, com committed unto me, mm -hmm. what is my reward then? Verily that, when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Christ without charge, that I abuse not my power in the gospel. For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I might Okay, go to Ephesians 1. I'm going to give you the references, then we'll make some comments, and then we'll, we'll shut her down. Go to Ephesians chapter number 1, please. Ephesians 1. I know we're kind of cutting into a, a verse or two. You know what? Um, Paulie, can you get 7? You know what, Mackenzie, get Ephesians 1, 7 through 14, please. Yep. You got it. Amen. One, one more. Go to Colossians 1. one. One more on this. I'm doing this for a reason. If you are a Bible marker, we are doing the four times that dispensation appears in the King James Bible. So in case anybody gets all squirrely with you, hide one in your heart and then write the other three down next to it. And everywhere you see this appear, what did you see? The dispensation of the fullness of time. When God dispenses to his son, everything belongs to you. 
And then he puts all in one. We looked at that mystery several weeks ago. How about the dispensation of the gospel? Well, if you don't do it willingly, then he's laying it on you that you are now chargeable with that thing because you won't do it willingly, freely. He actually dispenses it to you. It becomes a burden to you, something you're accountable for. Colossians chapter number 1. I need uh, Karen, get 21. Man, where do you stop this at? 21 to 29. You're just going to have to do it. you have to do it there for me, kid. Amen. So your four times that they appear is First Corinthians, First Corinthians nine seventeen, Ephesians one ten, Ephesians three two, and then right here Colossians one twenty five. That's the four times dispensation occurs in the King James Bible. Now, go with me to Luke sixteen, and this will put the bow on the the Bible usage or the, the Bible way of dispensation. Like I said, that book by Clarence Largan, 100 years ago, way, way ahead of its time. Excellent book. He gets a little crazy with the pyramids and all that stuff, and the way the angle coming up out of the tomb is, and the sun and all that stuff, and the angles of the pyramid. And it, but it, I, mean, I mean, he hand draws the pictures of Nebuchadnezzar and the gold head and the body. It's, it, honestly, I, I saw it on Sunday. I think Guido brought a copy in. I have a copy of it, if anybody wants to read it. I have the 100th anniversary edition. Not that it's any big deal, but pretty cool. The cover's real nice. Open it up, and it's the same book. I think it was printed in 19, yeah, it was 1920 or 1919, something like that. But absolutely phenomenal to give you a baseline of how God deals with men in different ages, what he dispenses to them to do. Luke chapter 16. Right, who haven't we heard from in a while? Mo Clops. Can you do it for me? <laughs> I need six times. I mean, you're all, uh, it do, that does. Not as bad as that eye, man, seriously. Paul, would you poke, poke, poke Mo in the eye with a, with a finger, man? Again? All, right, all right, man. All right. Can you get, uh, man. Do, do one through, do one through eight. I want to cut it short, but I, I just don't have that gene in me. Well, I'll tell you why, because there's a word that's going to pop out here, and you're going to see the word that pops out that's akin to dispensation. Go ahead, please, Mo. Yeah, yep. This sounds like most kids nowadays going for a job. Anyway.
Then said he to another, And how much owest thou? And he said, An hundred measures of wheat. And he said unto him, Take thy bill and write four score. And the Lord commended unjust stewards, because he had done wisely. For the children of his world were in, are, me, are in their generation wiser than the children of the world. Luke chapter 12. I did say I was the last one, right? Luke 12. Pinocchio's in the pulpit. No. <laughs> Luke 12. That is a great commercial, by the way. And you're going to be successful. And his nose yeah. keeps going. And, you, and it just comes. That is phenomenal. That's phenomenal. I, I know. I, I watched the commercial. I'm going to Baptist Purgatory for that one. All right, Jonathan, speaking of Baptist Purgatory, Brother Jonathan, 12. <laughs> I'll be there with you, man. I'll be there with you, man. Uh, can you get 41, just honestly, I'm not being smart for the sake of time. Can you go 41, 42, 43? Luke 12, 41, 42, 43. Then Peter said unto him, Lord, speakest thou this parable unto us, or even at all, or even to all? And the Lord said, Who then is that faithful and wise steward, whom his Lord shall make ruler over his house, and give him their portion of me in due season? Mm-hmm. Blessed is that servant. What's the common word that you saw in Luke 16 and right here in this passage right here? It just kept recurring. Go ahead. Steward. What's a steward of a ship do? He's, under the, he, he's supposed to take care of the, of the needs of the, of, the, of the passengers. He's supposed to make sure everything goes smoothly and correctly. Uh, he's, <laughs> wow, man. That's a picture you won't get back, man. <laughs> the pink tank top, the white striped shorts. Can I stitch the hole in your sail, please? I know, man. You got that, you got that weird vibe going, man. But you just saw it. The word steward and stewardship. So what is a dispensation? It's God dispensing something to who? A what? A steward. What are you and I? Stewards, able ministers of the New Testament. That's what God will hold us accountable for. That's what a dispensation is from a King James Bible. It's important because when you read Ephesians, people say, oh, that was specifically. No, no, as it is now revealed to me. It was already given as we saw in the shadows in the Old Testament, right? Right? The Jew and the Gentile, the, the Jewish husband and the, Jew, the Gentile bride and all that. We saw tons of pictures of that. But now, given the way it was given to the Apostle Paul, it's just full on display. Here it is. Let everybody know. That's a dispensation, man. It'll help you when you read your Bible through and don't get too caught up with, well, that's just, you know, we're, yeah, I, I, I know how to use the term. But you want to use it the way the Bible uses it. It involves God dispensing responsibility, a message, a truth. Whatever, whatever he tells that steward, or the na didn't he make the Levites stewards over the ark? It's akin to stewardships and being a steward over what God dispensed to you. Pretty cool. Paul, I pray for us if you could, and we will vamoose for the evening. Amen. Yeah, amen. Amen. Yeah, amen. Amen.
As Paul, I mentioned, Wood Lake on Friday night. Mo, you have a prayer request? 